Hey, it's Amy, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. And yes, I finally got a new A mug, Oops, A mug to replace the one that I broke and I loved so much. So thank you, mom, for the new A mug. Sorry, it's been so sporadic this summer. It just there's a lot been going on and I have some news which I'll probably share in another video so keep an eye out for that but it's just hard to balance sometimes you know life, working, teaching music lessons and training for a marathon which brings me to this video. I wanted to give you a brief update on how my Boston Marathon training is going and just a few things like my favorite workouts, how I'm feeling, what shoes I'm currently using and just how the training has been going. I can't believe the Boston Marathon is less than 12 weeks to go or so. It's getting very real. So let's just dive right into how my training is going for the Boston Marathon. When I first got the news that I had gotten into the Boston Marathon, I was so excited. Definitely cried a little bit, but it just felt like forever away. But now it's coming closer and I finally am feeling good and but I'll save that for in a little bit. The Boston Marathon is a bit unique this year and if you didn't know already it's actually on October 11th 2021. This is instead of its usual time in April. All the majors are within weeks of each other. I know Chicago's are the same day as Boston so it's a pretty exciting few weeks in the marathon world at least. When I got the news that Des Linden was running Boston again I got so excited because I'm such a huge fan of hers and really hope I can see her even from a distance. I know that sounds creepy, but I'm just, I can't wait to be there and just be surrounded by, you know, the Boston Marathon and everything that goes along with it. But getting back to October, I know it's different than its usual April time, but I think this is an awesome opportunity because when else would you be able to train for Boston in the summer and not have to deal with snow? I don't know, just training for a spring marathon can be terrible because the weather's so unpredictable. Unless you live in a very temperate location, but Toronto does get some snow. I just know myself personally that I do so well summer training once I get used to the heat of course but just training for a fall marathon I just all of my fall marathons have gone really well and the one spring marathon I did just was bad. So I wanted to share what I've been doing so far in my training cycle. I started kind of base building in the end of May so I've been going for how many weeks is this? Okay, one, two, okay, like three months, that's a uh, math numbers, too hard. So it's been a while and only now do I feel really strong and that my workouts are, they're getting harder, but I feel like I can accomplish them and I have that extra kind of kick to my legs. At the beginning of the training cycle, I don't know, my legs just felt kind of just dead. Like I would get to the end of a rep and I would literally have nothing left to give in my legs. They just felt empty. I had just nothing, no last kick, which is just not a nice feeling. We were doing a lot of 5K stuff too, which maybe I just wasn't used to doing that as much, but it was really struggle for maybe a good month. It also didn't help that it was getting warm and I was getting used to the heat, so getting adjusted to the heat, doing 5K stuff, which is just out of my comfort zone, maybe just all combined to just my body not liking it for a bit. The weather's been so unpredictable this summer with very, a lot of humidity, but also lots of rain. I don't know, it's just been a weird weather here in Toronto. Something else I've been doing to get ready for Boston is that I watch at least once a week the course. There's a really cool video and I'll have the link in the description below, but basically a car just goes through the entire route and they have different, you know, famous people or just people who know the course give advice through different sections of the course. So I definitely wrote all that information down and just really enjoy just seeing the route. I don't know, I just wanted to know what to expect and just have no surprises. I didn't know that you went through different towns and that you're really surrounded by the woods a lot and just, yeah, it was a big shock. So I'm very, very thankful that I started watching this video. So again, I just know what to expect and know kind of, yeah, have an idea of what it's gonna look like at least during the route. And so that's just one less thing to kind of worry or think about on the marathon because there's a lot going on. And the last thing I wanna be is just stressing about what's coming next or just being caught off guard by things. So I'm trying to eliminate all elements of surprise as much as I can. There's always gonna be things that pop up, but I'm really happy to keep watching the route and <laughs> don't judge me, but I still like tear up at the finish line every time I watch it. I don't know, I just, 
get so excited uh, and just emotional, so I know I'm probably gonna cry at the end of the real race when I'm there in person. Some of my favorite workouts have been the longer repeats. Maybe this is just why I love the longer distances, but I just like grooving or getting into a groove on like kilometer repeats. For example, one of the workouts that recently we did and it, you know, it was hard, but I just, I felt real so strong afterwards. And, and this one in particular was warm up. You can do, I did a longer warm up, but then you did three times two kilometers at tempo with a couple minutes of recovery in between each set. I feel like there's a few definitions of tempo, but in my own training at tempo pace, it's between your half marathon and your 10K. So basically your 15 kilometer pace or your kind of whatever you can hold comfortably for an hour and it's not comfortable. But that's kind of a general concept. But again, there's lots of different definitions for tempo pace, but that's just what I use. One of the workouts that I really struggled with this training cycle is the ladder. Maybe that was because it was at the beginning of the training cycle and I still just was getting kind of stronger and just getting used to, you know, training again at a high intensity, but I don't know why, I just it was a minute one, so you did uh, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 82 to 80, 60, 30 with each half of it as a recovery. And every time I get to that two minute, I would die the second one. Like I couldn't breathe. It was just not a good scene. So it's just one that I struggled with a lot. How about you? What's a workout that you've struggled with recently? Tell me in a comment below. Cannot wait to get to marathon pace. Like it's gonna feel like a dream after doing all this 5K tempo pace. And that's probably the whole reason we do these faster paces to make marathon pace easier, but I just love marathon pace and I just, I always takes me a little bit to kind of groove into the marathon pace, just getting used to what that feels like to run and then once I'm used to it, it just, you just again have to lock into it on race day, but it's just, I don't know, I love marathon pace and this is why I love the marathon, except for the last 10 kilometers. I've also been doing a lot of cycling for cross training at least twice a week and that's been really fun. At first my legs were not used to it, I just was using different muscles and I consider myself pretty in shape but when I went on the bike I was like oh my goodness, I couldn't keep up or I just struggled for a little bit, especially on hills. But I feel like I'm slowly getting stronger and I'm still a newbie at cycling but I'm really enjoying it. It's just a fun way to get out with friends and see more of Toronto or just anywhere really and not have that impact on my legs. I did a workout last night and just doing a recovery ride this morning, my legs feel so much better already. So I'm very happy that I have a bike this training cycle and I'm excited and to continue biking and just seeing how much it just makes me a better runner. And it's fun to do a new sport as I've mentioned in my cross training for runners uh, video, which I'll have up here and below here. <laughs> I'm trying to incorporate strength at least four times a week with two of these sessions longer and two shorter sessions. I try to time it so I either do it right after a run because I don't know about you but I have a hard time motivating myself if I don't do it after my run and I have to wait the whole day and I'm tired and then just the thought of doing a workout just I don't know doesn't appeal to me so I'm trying to get better at like kind of managing my time so I can do my run and then my strength workout and then boom boom I don't have to shower twice in a day. I don't want to get another injury and just trying to strengthen my weakness and of course I'll have to reduce some of the time that I spend strength training when I get to peak weeks as just there's just gonna be so much kilometers I'm running or miles sorry Americans uh, and I just feel like I won't be able to recover as well if I'm doing huge strength workouts and big running workouts so you know there's a time for everything and I've mentioned this in other videos too but I just really want to focus on strength training and not ignore that because I want to stay injury free and I want to be a stronger runner and you get stronger by doing strength so and running of course but that's what I'm trying to focus this training cycle is doing more strength or just being more diligent about it. How often do you do strength in a week? I'm very curious. One area I just need to be better at and is doing mobility, especially at night. I just need to get into a routine of doing it and just, yeah, schedule it in and then I'll do it. I'm trying to be better at that because I do feel a little tight, nothing like injury wise, but I just need to be better at this and find, need to find a routine or just make up a kind of routine for myself. And then once I have it laid out, it's just so much easier to follow. I just want to avoid injuries and just feel better too. So that is something I've been trying to work on. Tea is so good. Of course, I've been also trying to do more hills in my training, especially on my like easy runs, just build it into the run and just help myself get used to 
that kind of you know running uphill and especially downhill because I feel like that's going to be something that will probably tire my legs so I want to get used to that or strengthen my quads and I especially did this long run where I intentionally like didn't push the pace but I just went around some hilly places and just again super easy just to add into the run and you can kind of ask friends where a hilly route is if you need help or just yeah just throw a couple hills in on your easy run nothing too strenuous because you don't want to exhaust yourself on an easy run and then not be able to perform on your you know workout days but just I want to throw in a couple more hills um, and do some more hill workouts too. Toronto is fairly flat there are some good hills but in general like where I like to run on the Martin Goodman Trail it's pretty flat you know a couple bumps here and there but I think it's just important to get my quads used to being tired. It's also encouraging that the Canadian USA border is opening up and I have my double shot now so really I'm good to go. I don't know it just makes me more hopeful that you know I will be able to go run this marathon and I can't I can't wait. I can't wait to run a in-person race like I just I'm gonna I'm gonna, I, I can't even talk because I'm so excited but it's just gonna be such a surreal amazing, emotional, and just awesome times. I'm very excited. Other things that I'm excited about is Tracksmith came out with their major singlets and they're so pretty and just the Boston Jackets seeing that and just yeah all the fun things that comes along with you know running running the marathon of course but just all the goodies you can get and it's just gonna be a really yeah really special probably very different than other Bostons but as I have nothing else to compare it with it'll be my first as I said before I will just soak it all in. So as promised, here are some of my favorite shoes that I've been using this training cycle so far. The first pair is the 880 from New Balance. I've actually retired these shoes as they're dead and I'll put on the screen how many kilometers I have run in each shoe, but it was time to retire them. But I did use these for a lot of the early training of the cycle, so they are just something I have loved to run in a lot. And this is the version 10. Haven't gotten the version 11 yet, but this has been just a solid shoe and it was, again, time to retire them, but they have done me well. Probably, there's so many shoes that I love, but probably one of my favorite ones this training cycle has been the Sockme Endorphin Shifts. This is the first version, as you can see the OG colors. I call these my Ronald McDonald shoes. I don't know why, but I love this colorway, by the way. But sadly, it's no longer being made, but I have tried the version 2 on and I cannot wait to get myself a pair. But I have to retire some more shoes before I can allow myself to get even more shoes. I mostly use these for long runs as they just, you know, that speed roll technology just really rolls you along and I find they get even better over time when you're wearing them. They just soften up a bit as it is a pretty like, I guess, dense cushioning as I would kind of describe it uh, to people. But I just love these shoes and just feel really good in them so they're not it doesn't feel too heavy or anything but this has probably been one of my top shoes for the cycle for like an easy long run shoe. The Clifton 7 is another shoe that I've been using this training cycle and I just have retired these as well as I ran in them on Tuesday night and they did not feel good I just they're dead. I have put a lot of kilometers on them and there's something in the shoe that my arch on the right foot doesn't like. And I only notice it, maybe it's because the shoe is, again, the, the midsole is kind of collapsing. And after I ran it in Tuesday, my foot was a little swollen on the arch. And, and I, you can kind of feel, you know, when I put my hand in it, there's like kind of a little bit of a raised part. And I, I have fairly flat feet, but it didn't really bother me at the beginning of wearing it. So maybe it's just, again, it's getting old and now hitting my foot in a weird place. I don't know, but I did love this shoe a lot and really enjoyed doing long runs or easy runs in them. So it's just at the end that they started out feeling super great. So another pair of shoes to be retired, but they have done me well and I have enjoyed and they're a little dirty, but I really enjoyed running in the Clifton 7s. And I have the Clifton 8s, which I'm excited to pull out. I just only run a few kilometers in them, but I wanted to kind of get these done and retire these before I pulled out the Clifton 8. So now I think it's time. Another speed shoe I've been using, and these are pretty old, but I, the TC Fuel Cells from New Balance, this is like, I got these last July. Again, I'll say how many kilometers I have on them because I don't, I can't remember offhand. The reason I've had them so long is like, and I think I've mentioned this before, but it has barely any traction or it does, but it does not do well in the winter times. It's any bit slippery 
there is nothing there to grab onto. I couldn't use them for like, I swear, five months. So I'm just trying to use them up and I do really enjoy them. I like the cushioning and it does have a carbon plate in them. So it's nice for tempo runs or just longer intervals. I find that I like wearing them for that, but I wouldn't say they're my favorite shoe, but I do really enjoy running in them and I like New Balance. So uh, this, these have been fun. I'm just trying to, again, use up the shoes that I have in my growing collection. Of course, my trusty Speeds, again, the first version. And I do love the speeds. I do love the cushioning. The nylon plate's nice. It's not as snappy as, say, the carbon plate in the TCs. I actually did a long run with a workout in them last week, and they were awesome. I really enjoyed having that plate, but again, I didn't feel like it was too hard on my body, you know, running 30 kilometers in a carbon plate. And, you know, again, that's not a bad thing, but just I'm very conscious of not doing every single run in a plated shoe as I that's really hard on your body, especially your joints. And, and also, I just, yeah. I think it's good to run without a plate uh, occasionally in your training week. The speeds are awesome, so I'll say the kilometers up here, but I do really enjoy these, especially the feature back black color, but I've been using these a fair amount this training cycle. I've also occasionally been using the Carbon X2 on speed workouts, but I will say I don't like wearing them for any run longer than like 13 or 14 kilometers. I find just my foot starts hurting. I think maybe it's because it is a slightly firmer cushioning. They are really fun to run fast in, but just not for longer distances. And it's, you know, people do run longer distances in it. So again, it must be just me. I just find I would much prefer wearing like these, you know, these for speed rather than the Carbon X2. I wanted to just tell you that I've also been wearing those occasionally and they are fun to run in. So I, yeah, I'm glad I have them, but again, I probably wouldn't do super long workouts. And that's hard because a lot of my workouts now are getting longer and longer, so I probably won't use these as much. I don't know, I just, for some reason, longer runs in the Carbon X2 just don't agree with my foot, especially my right foot. Maybe there's a theme of my right foot, but that's for another day. <laughs> and lastly, these have been a recent purchase, a recent splurge, but I could not resist. These are the Invincibles by Nike, and they are beautiful. It's the Olympic colorway, and you can see the 2021 in the insole, and oh, these babies are just so beautiful. So white, so pink, but just, I love the colorway. Oh my goodness, I just was obsessed. And they feel awesome. Like, they're not unstable at all. Like, I know there's a huge stack height, but it's not, I don't feel like I'm gonna like twist an ankle or roll an ankle, I mean and they have good traction on the bottom and it's just the cushioning. That ZoomX foam is just like so addicting and so wonderful to run in. So it has the, you know, the performance ZoomX foam with all the durability of an everyday shoe. So I'm very happy to have these and I use them for mostly just easy recovery runs right now. I haven't done a long run in it yet, but I do really love these shoes and I'm kind of obsessed and I don't want to wear them too often because I don't want to burn through them, but they are very fun. Have you ever worn the Invincibles? I want to know in a comment because I don't know. I want to know if everyone loves them as much as I do. How about you? Are you training for a marathon or another race? I'd love to know. Also, I'd love to know how your training is going and what your favorite workouts have been. As always, click the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a video. And if you like this video, tap that thumbs up button. Happy running and training, and I'll see you next time.